The doctrine of neo-Darwinism is rooted in an ideology of separateness and competition. Yet in real life, nothing is separate from its environment. Everything engages through energetic and material relation with its surroundings. In nature, every living organism consists of one or more living cells. Each cell has a membrane, a semi-permeable enclosure containing pores through which substances can flow in and out of. Life breathes a continual exchange of energetic flows through these permeable boundaries. There can be no hard line boundary around any living form, yet there is most definitely boundary. There is differentiation and distinctness, yet there is no separation. Life is continually expressing itself through an open dialogue with life. Organisms pulsate in a relation of continual dynamic tension with the world around them. As expressions of nature, we attune within this ocean of ebbing and flowing energy. This is real nature, beyond the fragmenting separation of individualism. There is reciprocity between body and world, where the perceiver and environment are not independent, but interactive. The more reciprocal relationships there are, the more tolerant or playful the ecosystem is to social, economic and environmental change. Diversity improves the chances of creating reciprocal, co-creative relationships. Excessive competition and short-termism destroy diversity and innovation. A lesson it would seem that many politicians, company executives and economists have yet to learn. We need to wake up to the wisdom running throughout life on Earth. Our ability to work with rather than against each other, harmonizing the tensions of competition and cooperation. Least we forget, only one in ten of our cells in our bodies are actually human. Without the help of our other than human kinship, we would utterly fail at life. In just a handful of healthy soil, there are more organisms living together than there are human beings on the entire planet. Applying the logic of neo-Darwinism, we would think that a tree, for instance, would at best only look after its genetic offspring. In fact, what we now understand is different species of trees regularly share nutrients with each other. An oak tree may share nutrients with an ash tree, for instance a mature tree sharing nutrients with a young sapling in another part of the forest. Far from life being driven by an innate competitive struggle, it partners and relates to form richer environments for life to further evolve. This understanding of nature helps us shift from our mindset of a purely self-centered, power-hungry, manipulative, egocentric engagement with our world to a more empathic embodiment of it. Our disposition becomes one of care rather than of control. Gone with the illusion of separation is our carcinogenic way. In the next podcast, The Origins of Oppression, we explore how our tendency to control the world around us is woven deep into the fabrics of Western civilization.